It's Evie. It's Two Girls, One Pod. The two girls this week. This is a bonus episode. How exciting. Uh, we're on Wurundjeri land and I have the most beautiful woman who I know this country adores because they should. Everyone knows how wonderful Casey Donovan is. I have loved her from afar and I've never loved her up close, but I get to it today. But I think you'll really love this episode because we talk about strength, which, you know, she's been through a lot in her life and the things that she's had to be strong about, things that could have broken her haven't. So please enjoy. Let me know what you think. Here's Casey Donovan. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. You are right smack bam in the middle of one of the best shows I've ever seen. Congratulations, number one, on And Juliet. I love you in it so much. Oh, thank you very much. It's a great show and Angelique slash The Nurse is such a great character to play. She's fun, she's witty, she's fast um, and, yeah, she gets her own little love interest, which she I love. She does. I love the storyline for her. It's so beautiful <laughs> because she's like the nurse is yeah. of the, yeah, Juliet, uh, which was Mag- <laughs> Miriam Magley's in the movie. It was. Um, but I want to ask you about your hair. You know the wig that you, is it mm-hmm. a wig? Because you yes. have that hair. I do. Not as long and beautifully curled, but um, no, it is a wig and the the wig department on this show is absolutely amazing. The work they do to get it to look like your natural hair, yes. your natural colour and all of the bronzes and the coppers in that yes. hair is, you know, it's been styled within an inch of its life and it's just beautiful. Every time I put her on, I'm like, oh, here she is. Yes, <laughs> and you do look so stunning. I covet that hair. I covet that whole look. I love it. I would never give up that role. I would just keep that role going on stage for yourself. Forever. Yeah. Now, speaking of performance, you are like one of our most famous Australian idlers <laughs> and my f- personal favourite. Thank you. You've really done so well since and I want to ask you about physical strength. Like mm-hmm. how you were, what, 16 when you I won I was, that? yeah, 16. So were you a fit teenager? and like Certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. Did you find, because, you know, you were this incredible singer to begin with and that would have been just a natural gift. Have you had to find the importance of physical strength when it comes to singing? Oh, certainly. Um, so as a kid, I played a lot of sports. I did little athletics. I did soccer. I was very fit and healthy. And then, you know, you kind of hit that weird period in high school where it's not kind of, you know, I went to to school in the western suburbs of Sydney. So it wasn't really that cool to be, you know, in a sports team or playing soccer. It was kind of just just be quiet and just do your – go to school and go yeah. home. Yeah. Um, so that kind of fell by the wayside and then music took over. And for me, that was amazing. But it wasn't until I hit musical theatre world that I realised, wow <laughs> – <laughs> these people are elite athletes yes. and it's so important, you know, keeping your body strong, keeping your mind strong, keeping, you know, bits of your body that you do repetition eight times a week, you know, yeah. doing the same thing every day. It really does take its toll on your body. So it wasn't until I did my first musical that I was like, oh, wow, um, I need to sleep for eight hours. Yeah. I need to not talk for a certain amount of time yes. and I need to rest. Yeah, you really do. And (laughs) you started a movement which I absolutely love, shogging. Oh, we love to shog. Shogging is such a great idea. Please it explain. Is. Well, look, it. Um, you know, if you want to check out more, check out my Instagram. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a great uh, TED talk that I did in my living room of Perth, which was about four meters uh, by three meters. Um, look, shogging is something that I have been doing for many, many years. Um, it's not a walk. It's not a run. It's that weird in between thing where you're in a running motion, but you're not sprinting or running very fast. It's kind of like a shuffle jog, but you can still keep your breath. But it's great for cardiovascular. It's great for long distance. And it's great just to move your body that extra little bit. You know, I don't know if anyone ever goes on a walk and goes, I reckon I could run for a second. (laughs) That's what a shog is. That's the moment where a shog comes in where you're like, oh, it's a little bit faster than a walk, but it's not, you're not exerting too much energy. Well, Cliffy Young was yes, I the, have heard a lot of Cliffy Young after that post. When I, mean, I grew up watching Cliffy Young do the shog <laughs> and not ever knew, knowing <laughs> that he never knew that's what he was doing. Yeah. Flash forward, you know, 40 years, Casey Donovan has just described Cliffy Young's style that got him to win many, many races. Yeah. 
Amazing. A- incredible. Mm. Um, can you tell me how you get through a musical run physically? Physically, um, I try not to get injured, uh, but getting older, uh, there are injuries that just keep arising. Um, yeah. Look, physically, it's just about stretching and looking after your body. Um, I've got a few little ailments, uh, which I found out through my career, uh, especially my first rib on both sides. That's a oh, joy. Really? Um, and being a singer, your first rib is very, very important. Very important. Because when that is up, like it is at the minute, I've got a heat pack in my bag, Um it pushes your larynx forward. So yes. when you're trying to do your singing oh and dancing and everything, um, it's quite difficult. So um, <laughs> I get physio more times than I, yeah. I want in my life. But, yeah. Um, yeah, look, it's all about stretching and looking after your body and listening to your body. A lot of performers will push through. Um, they'll have a niggle and they'll have, you know, a bit of pain and they're like, I can get through it. And I'm one of those people that just like, it's totally fine. It's fine. I can do this. I can do this. Um, until you can't do it. <laughs> look, not great. Um, you know, having a show off is not only a physical rest, For me, it's mental torture because I then start to get the text messages and the Instagram messages of we paid to come here and we flew from Perth and we've come down from Brisbane and just to see you and you're not on stage. And it's a lot to take on board when you're sitting there going, I'm a human. Yes. My body gets tired. Yes. My body gets exhausted. And as much as we as actors and performers want to be on that stage, to have one show off will save us having weeks off at a time. Yeah, that's right. And that's why we have the pain that we have because it's telling us you need to Mm. stop right now. Yeah, slow down. I wanted to ask you about your mental strength. Like, because, you know, getting DMs like that and having um, guilt, a bit of shame, mm-hmm. that really plays into your body. Certainly. It so certainly does. What, how do you, you know, you, obviously you were just saying then that, you know, you are very good at saying, I'm just human. And this yeah. happens to everyone and, and this is the choice I've made because the alternative is going to upset a lot more people yeah. than just a, a night full of people. Have you got other, you know, things that you do for your mental strength? Certainly. Um, I take my mental health very, very seriously. Uh, For many years, I just kind of ignored it and I was like, oh, no, that's fine. (laughs) It's just anxiety. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. It'll go away. It'll go go away. Yeah. Um, (laughs) As it grows and grows in the back corner. Um, Look, there's lots of things I do for my mental health. Um, Talking about it with other peers and cast members is very helpful um, and very healthy because during those moments, everyone is going through something in their lives. Um, Being in musical theatre, is almost an escape in itself because you go to work and you just put on someone else's clothes and you dress up and you put on a different face and for two and a half hours, you're not you and it's beautiful. But um, certainly talking about things and I've done a lot of work in my on my mental health over the last few years and my beautiful uh, co-star Hayden T told me about a lady that does brain training, uh, Perry Curtis is her name, and I was like, oh, okay, I was a bit sceptical in at first and. Mm She talks about, you know, your brain and how when we keep saying we've got anxiety, we're feeding that beast, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and everyone looks after their brains differently. And, you know, yeah. if you do want to check out Perry, she's absolutely amazing. It's not a painter, but she talks about your brain and how your cells and your pathways yes, neural pathways. change, yes. your neural pathways. Yes. And it's, you know, you're doing brain training. So when your brain's under stress and anxiety, it's yellow. Yeah. In an yeah. MRI. And yeah. then when you go to, uh, you know, you do your screening, um, when you're at a restful state, your brain, the, I don't know what part of your brain it is, somewhere here. Yeah. Um, the frontal lobe like, amygdala. Yes. I yes, just yes. made that up. Yeah, sure. The, hippo- <laughs> the hippopotamus. Um, <laughs> it goes blue yeah. when you're in a restful state. So when I get stressed or get anxiety, I just envision my brain turning blue. Wow. And so every time I see blue or I use my right hand, I'm telling my brain that we're going blue. We're not under stress. We're not anxious. We're not anything. We're just, we're blue, we're safe yes. and we're calm. Um, so that for me has been a massive learning. And it's kind of like you record your meditation and you listen to it when you're starting to feel stressed and you just keep doing this brain training. And it's really, really, I found it very helpful for me and, um, you know, imposter syndrome and all of those things that stop you going on stage. So when people are telling you, you know, I've done this and we've flown here and we've spent that, I kind of just, yeah, I turn everything blue and I just sit with myself and say I need to do this for me because at the end of the day 
I can only look after me and I can only get up on stage when I am ready and healthy and fit and fighting uh, to move forward. So, yeah, I think it's just putting that safety blanket around myself to be able to get up there and get on stage and, yeah, be the the person I am. Yeah, oh, wonderful. Um, you know, you're talking about going to someone that works on your brain, I know for a fact your brain and your mind are two completely different things. And if you don't, one's physical, one's mental. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take care of the physical brain, your mental mind is going to suffer, but your mental mind can really ruin your physical brain. And so mm. it's it's really great uh, practice to be in because you're working with your with both and you're understanding the neural pathways which are your brain you know and then having your meditation which is your mind like what a wonderful piece of therapy and treatment that you're getting mm -hmm. highly recommend my last question for you Casey Donovan yes is what do you think is your best true real strength the best one you've got um I think I have many but I think, <laughs> look, I process things in different ways on different days and whatever mood or hormone, you know, moment I'm going through. Yep. But I feel like my strength in life is to keep getting up and mm -hmm. to keep moving forward and learning. We never stop learning. The moment we stop yeah. learning in life is a moment, you know, we need to sit down and go, all right, this is what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. You know, and that, that treatment work that you're doing, you're never going to stop and say, okay, I'm done. I've, yeah. I've learned everything I can about my own brain. Yeah. And that I think that's a, a great strength to have, to know mm. that, you know, you, you do never stop learning. But as simple as it sounds, just getting up is a huge strength, isn't it? Oh, God, yeah. You know, thinking about getting up, you know, all these people have this guilt that they didn't go for that walk or they didn't do that assignment but having that moment to stop and pause and go you know what right now my capacity is this yeah I can do that in an hour yeah but just giving yourself a moment to breathe and yeah. then go I'm going to get up and do that um there's strength in those little moments when you take that first step you know whether it's going for a one minute walk around the block because you can't actually be asked to go doing that one minute is more than not doing that minute yeah um yeah so, yeah, I find, yeah, strength in the little things and just getting up and sometimes we don't get it done and sometimes we do and we, we champion those moments. Um, but, yeah, I think getting up and just giving it a go even when we're tired. <laughs> yeah, good. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you. Now, the and Juliet, you're in Sydney performing at the moment. Um, how long's that run for? We're running till July. <gasps> so tickets are on sale. We're here for five months. Come on down to the Lyric Theatre, see oh. Anne Juliet, live your best life. It is the most fun show I've ever been a part is of. Is it? Yeah, that's the so music good to is know. Great. Yeah, the dancing is, is so great. it is so fun to watch. It is it a is, jukebox musical. It's which, great. Which means you are encouraged to stand up and sing along, which... Yeah. <gasps> I was just the joy of being able to do that. I have to tell you, Casey, I bawled my eyes out because it, it, it's a feminist story and what they've done with the original story of Anne Juliet, but the pop music, Max Martin, I have not been so unashamedly pop loving as I was <laughs> watching that show and just bawling my eyes out like by the end and the, the beautiful themes that are in it. I know everyone that is going to buy tickets will go and see it again because I don't think there's anyone that doesn't go and see it again. You have to see it again. Oh, so, people flew all yeah. across Australia, even <gasps> to Singapore. It was next level. It's just, yeah, it's got this beautiful following and the, the storyline and the characters, everyone is represented on that stage. Yes. And it's so beautiful to be able to see that and to see that there are people that are just living and breathing and for this show and it's just, it's... It's so much fun. Good. Oh, long, long may it live. Thank you yes. again for coming on and you have a beautiful, beautiful day. Likewise. Thank you so much. Thanks, Case. Thank you for listening to this bonus episode. I will be back next week in your ear holes.